By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk new school magic. Wasn't it old school magic? No, 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 wait a minute. This is April 1st, so that means it's time for the latest trend in Magic the Gathering. Last year, we gave you new school, and this year, we are going to continue with that. We held the World Championship New School, your chance to play with old cards, but then in their new little jacket, in their new format, you can play with foil cards, borderless cards, I don't know what the, all these cards are called, but you can play with them, it's fantastic, woohoo! And for this World Championship, we have invited all the players all over the world, there are six in total, and uh, in this episode, I'm going to show you the finals of our new school tournament, and in that finals, we're going to look at Gideon, yes, Gideon, the Planeswalker, he is playing with um, Azorius Nuofo, I think that's the name for his deck, and I am playing, because I am in the finals, I made it in the finals, I am playing with Robotron 2.0, <laughs> which is a really cool deck inspired on the remake of Robocop, because of course that was much better than the original Robocop. So guys, strap on, get ready. As you see, we've got our Coca-Colas ready, because we want to stay top sharp, because it's very important in new school magic. Our beverages need to be... Uh, consumed in a timely fashion and obviously non-alcoholic because we want to focus super important stuff now i'm just going to do it as usual i'm going to start with the deck decks beautiful decks well they're decks let me put it that way i'm not sure if they're beautiful but anyway i'm going to discuss the decks with you um but maybe you want to skip that maybe you want to go straight to the finals of the world championships new school the hottest thing in magic the gathering right now maybe even hotter than those neon dynasty motorcycles that everybody's been talking about <laughs> anyway um yeah so if you want to skip that go straight to the match which is super cool by the way you can check the description below and there you will find several timestamps one of those timestamps reads MTG New School and if you click on there that will take you straight to the action okay as for now I am going to continue with the deck text and I'm going to start with the deck of my opponent Azorius Nuovo and here we see the deck of my opponent Gideon Azorius Nuova Scuola 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 anyway Spanish for Azorius New School but <laughs> sorry for my pronunciation it's horrible um, on a serious note though I'm looking at this deck I do recognize a few cards, but some cards I'll probably have to look up. I think um, there are some like full art cards, like the card next to the islands, because I can see the islands on the left. And then next to it, I see that like a card with no text. I believe that's a disenchant looking at the casting cost. And next to it, we've got this weird stuff. Is that a play set? I think, yeah, oh yeah, those are swords to plowshares. So we've got four swords to plowshares. Then we've got a savannah lion. Um... Yeah, okay. And then we've got the Surrender of Freets. And next to it, actually, this is a version that I kind of like. This, I think Rebecca Quay made these Sarah Angels. I think they're, again, it's very subjective, but I kind of like them. Um, and then we have, oh, that's such a weird art version of that card. That's a Soul Ring, I believe, next to the Sarah Angels. Under there, we've got a, yeah, we got a Spirit Link. We've got a Balance. I recognize the Mana Drain. And then if, if I look at the other row below, I think that's a strip mine next to that island. Then we've got a maze of if, two mazes of if. Um, the thing is with maze of if, um, if you know the original art uh, by Anthematix, he actually said in an interview that when he got the assignment to make art for the card maze of if, he deliberately did not want it to be a maze. He thought that was so, um, in Dutch you say, for the hand liggend, it was so obvious that he was like, okay, I am not going to do that. I just think it's corny. I'm not going to make an actual maze. So what, of course, did uh, Watsi do <laughs> years later? They made a maze because it's called a maze. It needs to be a literal maze. I mean, guys, this is why I love the old school artists. They don't take everything literal. I mean, they try to find, you know, ways to, you know, that is what an artist does. It shows you a way that you didn't think about and kind of sparks a part in your brain or wherever it is in your body where like, wow, that is that is inspiring or that is, anyway, some kind of emotion. I wouldn't say Mesa Vif made me feel inspiring. It was more like, ooh, that's gruesome and dark. I kind of like that. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm getting off topic. 
Let's look at the rest of the deck, shall we? Because obviously, this is fantastic. This is new school, the hottest thing in Magic the Gathering right now. And next to the Maze of If, we've got full art made by an OG artist, Mark Poole. These are Mishra's factories. Um, I don't know all the sets, by the way. So maybe, you know, if you guys want to wanna comment on that in the comment section below, like, let me know what sets are in all of these decks, because I have no idea. But yeah, this is Mishra's factory. Uh, this is a full art version. I mean, I, I love the OG Mishra's Factories with the Seasons, but at least this one's made by an old school artist. Then next to it, we've got City of Brasses. Uh, I think they're, these are golden bordered and signed. So yeah, that's interesting. That's probably in some kind of world championship deck, maybe. I don't know. And then next to that, we have... What is that? Oh, it's... Oh, look at the casting cost. And yeah, it's the Control Magic. So, um, yeah, okay, whatever. And then we've got another weird edition of counter spells. How many different arts of counter spells are there right now? I mean, must have, must be a billion. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite version of counter spell is. You know, as a blue mage, I would love to know that. And then next to it, uh, yeah, I actually think this art is kind of goofy. I kind of like this art, to be honest. This is the Psionic Blast. And again, this is a full art card like the Dishenchant cards. Um, I have no idea from what set or when these came out, but yeah, it's kind of funny, I have to admit. And then on the bottom, uh, we got our sideboards. We've got some Circle of Protections, so black and red, which is good because I'm playing blue, so he doesn't have blue. We've got red elemental blasts there. <laughs> Man, those are ugly. Sorry, I mean, they're beautiful. What I mean, by the way, when I because I respect the artists, right? Don't get me wrong. I'm not here to bash people's work, so I shouldn't say ugly. But what I mean is what you get usually when you do everything on the computer, and the the art just seems to kind of get so dark and blurry, and I can't really see what it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? And if if you then make a deck photo and you look at everything, it's kind of like this blurry blurry thing you know whereas with old school but of course that also has to do with the fact that i know all those cards by heart i can really recognize them you know there's a lot of different styles and things and you know there's no yeah anyway it's a different style different era of course and then next to that we've got two jm day tomes so um that is of course our drawing book so i to be honest i think this is quite a strong deck i mean this this is kind of line dip in a new school jacket so azorius nuova I, I've got to work on my pronunciation. Sorry, guys. Anyway, this is the deck of my opponent, Gideon. You know, but now I want to show you my deck, Robotron 2.0. <laughs> and here we see the deck that it's all about today. <laughs> Robotron. I love it. I just, sorry, man. I'm just having way too much fun. Also making the deck photo, getting that cut out of Robocop. And um, yeah, it is the OG Robocop, by the way, this picture. But uh, yeah, this deck. So this is a Tron deck, right? Obviously, Tron with blue. So with Tron, you can see the Tron lens there at the bottom. So the mine, the power plant, the tower. If I can assemble all three, I'm going to have a lot of mana, right? If I tap my mine, I'm going to get two. Um, the, the power plant is going to give two and the tower is going to give three. But remember, it is Tron. So I need to have all three of these lands for them to work. If I only have one of those lands in play or two of those lands in play, they only tap for one mana. So obviously, my goal is to get my Tron lands out and um, to assemble Tron. And then I'm just gonna cast a lot of artifacts. As you can see, there are just a lot of artifacts in this deck. I'm just gonna go through them because you probably don't recognize the art. Um, so we've got uh, GM Day Tomes there, three of them. On top of there, we've got a full play set of Rod of Runes. How many decks do you know that play a full play set of Rod of Runes? Well, Timmy does because I wanna do Timmy stuff and I wanna, you know, those the Rod of Rune is actually like Robocop's gun and he's shooting at its opponent like doof, doof, doof. You know, that's, that's what he's doing. So I'm quite happy with my army of Rod of Runes. I, I feel very good about those. Then next to that, we've got two of those wide bordered cards. They are Icy Manipulators. And under there is another Icy Manipulator. So I've kind of, you know, I've, I've two cards from all over the place to assemble this deck. Then we've got a Soul Ring under there. We've got two Millstones. Uh, Millstone is kind of my backup plan. If I, if I can't win, because there, there is quite some control in this deck. So if for some reason I can't win, I'm just going to mill my opponent. It, it, it's plan B. Um, and then I've got a Disrupting Scepter. Um, and next to it, I've got four cards with different art, but they're all the same card. They're all Juggernaut. So four different versions of Juggernaut. This is kind of the aggro side of my deck. Then I've got uh, two Yoshin Soldiers, a Primal Clay, and a Dancing Scimitar. And the Dancing Scimitar art, 
it's actually kind of funky. I think, it, you know, in a way, I kind of like it. It's um, it's Matrix style, like he's going, you know, under the under the scimitar there. And um, next to that, we've got four Mahamati Jens. And so, one of those is foil, actually. You can't really see it on the photo, but I own a foil Mahamati. I know I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty cool dude. I own a foil Mahamati Jin. And uh, next to that are um, are the two Ezer Drakes and two Phantom Monsters. And then we've got four Spell Blasts. I think Spell Blast is just a really cool counter spell. And yeah, I think it's kind of good with Tron. I don't know. We'll see. Then um, we see the islands there. They're all um, uh, full art islands because that's the kind of guy I am. And then in the middle of the deck photo, we've got the four foil uh, Mishra's factories. And then next to it, we've got a Sage of Latnam that got reprinted in uh, Dominaria, the set made by um, Richard Garfield. Pretty cool. And then we've got um, Apprentice Wizard. And I mean, I'm a big fan of the OG art of Apprentice Wizard, but I have to say this art also is... I kind of like it. It's kind of stylish. And I think Apprentice Wizard can do a lot in here. One blue and tap for three mana. That can be really cool. So the idea story-wise, of course, is that Sage is the mentor and the apprentice is, well, the apprentice. And the Sage is learning the apprentice how to deal with all these artifacts and um, eventually turning him into Robocop, creating Robotron. Is it Robotron? Is that tier one? No, it's 2.0. <laughs> That's, that's a joke that I have in mind. But nobody ever asked me, like, can I ask you a question? I say, yeah, sure, man. It's Robotron Tier 1. And then I can say, no, it's 2.0. <laughs> but, yeah, nobody has asked me that. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit off topic here. We've looked at the deck of Gideon. We've looked at my awesome deck. That means we're ready for the finals of the World Championships of New School. Let's get to it, people. Game number one, here we go, of the championships of New School, the World Championships, the finals here. Here we see the opening hand, so I've got a Sage of Latinam, some Juggernauts there, and a Dancing Scimitar. This is the hand of Gideon, my opponent. So he's got a Mistress Factory, some Disenchants, a Surrender, and a Maze. So that Maze is really good against the Juggernaut. That's probably coming later. So this is the finals of the New School Championship. There I'm starting with an Urza's Power Plant. And a pass turn. There's a Mishra's factory on the side of Gideon. Let's see what I can do here. There is Urza's mine. It may it may take me some time to identify all these cards. So far, I feel like I'm doing really, really good, by the way. Mishra's factory attack. I'm dropping to 18. And now I've got Tron. This is Tron turn three. This is ideal. This is what I want to do. So I feel very lucky here. Natural Tron turn three, playing a Juggernaut. 5-3 powerhouse. There's that Maze of If, unfortunately. So the Juggernaut is not really going to have an impact. If I can find, of course, an Icy Manipulator, I could tap down the Maze. There is another Juggernaut. And a Sage of Latinam and a Millstone. So I'm just really casting all my cards out right now because I've got so much mana. You know, so this is very helpful for me. Passing turn to Gideon. He's finding a white mana. Perhaps he's got a disenchant. And I, and I feel kind of lucky that Gideon is not playing with any land removal. So I'm just going to keep this, all this Urza lands. And there's a disenchant taking care of one of the juggernauts. That makes sense, of course. And my Sage of Latinam still has summoning sickness. So in response, I couldn't tap and sack my juggernaut. Playing a second blue here. Attacking. There's the maze activation. Remember, those Tron lands can now produce 7 mana. That's kind of insane. Tapping 4 here for a Rod of Ruin. So with that Rod of Ruin, I can start pinging the life total of Gideon. He's still on 20. Playing another Maze of If. Oh, man. He's got so much defenses. So both Maze of Ifs in his deck are now on the table. Tapping 2 lands here. Another Disenchant. And then I'm going to ping him for one. And of course, I'm going to sack it. And I'm going to mill him here for two. And then I'm going to sack the Rod of Ruin exactly to the Sage of Latinam. And I'm going to draw a card for it. So that's actually a lot of value for me. One damage and a card back for that disenchant. Playing another Tron land here. I need to find a Jam Day Tome. That would be perfect right now because I could start drawing extra cards and that would really be probably the end of Gideon here. Tapping four for an Icy Manipulator. Okay, that's something at least. 
Tapping. No, not doing it. Attack it with the Juggernaut. Then I'm going to cast a Dancing Scimitar and Passing Turn. So let's see if Gideon can do something. I mean, it's looking bad for him. He needs some artifact removal. Playing out two creatures here. The Surrender Jin. So a 3-4 creature with flying that deals one point of damage to Gideon. And look at that. It seems to be all foil. Look at Gideon go with his foil deck. And uh, we also have that Savannah Lions there. So the 2-1 vanilla creature. And tapping down his maze so I can kind of attack here. And he's going to block on the Surrendip. So that means he loses his Surrendip. But that's actually not too bad for Gideon. Oh, a Disrupting Scepter. I can start using that to empty Gideon's hand. I think it's not empty yet. Can't really see his hand size. Okay, there we can. Two cards in hand. Now three cards in hand. So that Disrupting Scepter is actually pretty annoying here for Gideon. And I just feel so lucky with that turn three Tron because that really changes everything for me. Ooh, this is a balance. This is a balance. Now, what am I going to keep? So I've got two creatures and his hand is... I think empty or not. So I'm also going to lose the cards in hand. So it looks like I'm losing the Dancing Scimitar, but then of course I can eat it up with the Sage of Letnam. But then I draw a card and I got to discard that card again to the balance. So that's probably why I'm not doing that. Taking two damage here, four damage actually, two from the Lion and two from Mishra's Factory. And then also using my Millstone on end step. So this was a pretty good move here by, uh, by Gideon. Only one card in hand, finding an Azur Drake. The problem for me, of course, is those two mazes of if on the side of Gideon. It's super difficult for me to get any damage through. Ooh, here we see a control magic. So he's probably going to steal the Azur Drake. And the tables are turning here. Remember, my hand's empty. So I'm actually sacking my Disrupting Scepter right now, hoping to find a Spell Blast. Not finding it, it seems. Tapping down the Lion and milling him for two here. And there is a Yoshin Soldier. Okay, so that's a 1-4 that I don't have to tap to attack. So Vigilance, as they call this, a new school. And passing turn. There is another Savannah Lion. I mean, Gideon is doing a pretty good job at kind of getting back into this. He's going to attack. I'm not using my Icy. That's kind of weird. Now I'm using the Millstone. Do I want to tap down perhaps his Mazes of If? No, I don't. Okay, so I think this was a bit of a play mistake on my part. Should have tapped down that Azur Drake. Okay, this is good. A Gem Day Tome. That is what I want to see. Now he can start drawing extra cards. Finding a land, tapping four, playing an Azur Drake. And do I really want to do that? Okay, also going to mill him. That does mean I've opened myself up, but of course I now have that Azur Drake to block his Azur Drake with, so that's probably the reason why. And I really want to continue with this mill plan. Because, you know, with those two mazes of if, it's just going to be so difficult to get through. Maze of if, and of course the, uh, the Azur Drake, which is a very good blocker to two for flyer. So passing turn here. And uh, as long as I can just, you know, as I can mill him. At the same time, I'm drawing extra cards as well, though. But that's not going to go as fast as uh, the milling of Gideon's deck. Milling away the Psy Blast, by the way, which is pretty good because that means I get to keep... Ooh, there's a Counterspell on the Juggernaut, but there's a Spell Blast on that Counterspell. So I'm Spell Blasting his Counterspell, kind of a Counter War here. That means that my Juggernaut will resolve. I don't think Juggernaut is that big of a deal, though. I'm going to tap down the Maze and... I'm going to draw a card and use my Millstone on Gideon here on end step. Finding another land. So I've got so much mana right now. Drawing an extra card. And finding another book. There's a counter spell on the book. So I feel perhaps it would have been better to kind of keep that spell blast. There's a double block with the two lines on the Juggernaut to keep that spell blast earlier. To say, okay, you're just going to counter away my Juggernaut. That's okay. That's not a big problem. I should have kept the counter spell there to maybe protect my Jam Day Tome later. Um, again, Millen Gideon for two here. And he's played a Sarah Angel from the Vault. Rebecca Quay version. It's actually a version I quite like. 
playing out even more lands. Look at the amount of mana I have. It's insane. So tapping down to Sarah again, milling, Gideon for two. So I mean, his it's, it's, it's deck is slowly thinning. Maybe this can be a millstone win, who knows? And okay, casting Mahamoti Jin. Of course, I'm playing with four Mahamoti Jins. This is the first one that I found. So perhaps with the Mahamotis, I can deal, finally deal some damage. I mean, look at the life total of Gideon. He is still on 19, I'm on 12. So despite the fact that I've had Tron since turn three, I'm not really able to deal any damage to Gideon, of course, because of those two mazes of if. And remember, his deck has a lot of answers. He's got Disenchant, Swords to Plowshares, Counter Spells. So it's really difficult to, to play through. This is a Phantom Monster, by the way, 3-3 three, three Flyer. But yeah, I mean, there's the attack with the Sarah Angel. And there's a Swords to Plowshare. So I'm going to draw a card, perhaps looking for a counter spell. Okay, he's going to Swords my Maamoti. So I'm going to go up to 17. Then I'm probably just going to take the damage. Going to go down to 13. Yeah, okay. So that's what's happening right now. And after taking damage, I decide to tap it. Okay, this is kind of weird. I feel like I'm making some mistakes with the with the IC. And I remember when I was playing this game, I constantly tried to find a way through those mazes of if. Ooh, very shiny, my foily Mamoti. And uh, obviously, I'm making mistakes here. I should just tap down, you know, the big creature threat. There's the strip mine. And I guess I'm now tapping down. Oh, I'm tapping down a maze again. I'm not really learning from my mistakes here. Then again, I've got the Mahamoti, of course, to, to block the Sarah again with. I think what happened uh, the previous turn was he declared attacks. I didn't respond because I thought I've got a Mahamoti to block anyway. And then before blockers were declared, he cast his swords on my Mahamoti. I think that's actually what happened. I still could have double blocked, though, with uh, Phantom Monster and Azur Drake. I feel that would have been a good block as well. Anyway, we're here now, and I'm doing pretty good. Look look at the... Oh, yeah, he's starting to count his cards. Oh, I've got another millstone. I kind of missed that. So I've casted another millstone. Now I can mill him for four. Yeah, I, I think he's just going to die. I think I'm going to win on my millstones here. Wow. That is really, this is really my B plan, like I said in the, uh, in the deck tech section. It's not my main plan. So that's kind of, I mean, look at this deck. He hardly has any cards left. Playing another GM Day Tome. And passing turn here. Drawing a card. I think that perhaps two mills will do the trick, actually. Another Mishra's Factory here for Gideon. And uh, it looks like I'm asking how many cards he's got in his graveyard. And now I'm... Um, yeah, I'm going to mill him for four. Tap down a maze. And I'm going to mill him again. And that's it. Then I'm going to pass turn. That's it. It's a millstone win. Sweet. Oh, wow. That is unexpected because that's not really what my deck wants to do. But that was kind of, yeah. Okay, cool, man. Um, I managed to get a win in against this very strong deck. I'm super happy. Anyway, we're going to shuffle up again and, uh, and play game number two. Maybe I can win that too and become the world champion of new school. That would be something. Game number two. Here we go. So I'm one up. That means Gideon is on the play here. It looks like I've taken a mulligan, putting a card there on the bottom. There's a good start for Gideon. Savannah Lines turn one. Putting on some pressure, which is actually quite good against my deck. Because I'm a little bit on the slow side. Of course, if I can assemble Tron again on turn three, you know, then I'm going to go really, really quick again. But let's first see where this game takes me. So there's a the damage. I'm going to drop to 18 and a pass here. There's an Urza's Tower. So mine and tower. If it can find a power plant, that would be really, really sweet. Ooh, Spirit Link on the Savannah Lions. That means that Gideon's going to gain life and deal damage at the same time. He's on 22 right now. And I'm playing a Mishra's Factory, so not another Tron land, unfortunately for me, but I have found... Oh, there's a Swords, though. A Yoshian Soldier, a nice and shiny Yoshian Soldier. But there's that quick Swords to Plowsiers and another attack. So I'm dropping to 15 right now. And look at the life total of Gideon. He's already on 24. It's looking pretty bad for me. I got to stop that Lion. Tapping 4. Again, not finding my third Tron land. 
Okay, Azure Drake. Ooh, Mana Drain. He's got the City of Brass. He can counter it, definitely. So there is a Mana Drain. So this is really, really unfortunate. And next turn, Gideon is going to gain um, some extra mana because of the Mana Drain. He does take a point of damage for the City of Brass. So he's dropping to 23. He's going to untap. He's got four mana right now. Let's hope he can't really do anything useful with it. Let's first, we see that attack. So I'm going to drop to 13. Nope, he's not doing anything. So I'm a little bit lucky there. I mean, it's still going really, really bad, but at least he's not expending his board. And okay, okay, there's a Phantom Monster. A Psionic Blast. Oh man, he's got all the answers right now. I've cast Yoshin Soldier, Azur Drake, Phantom Monster, but he's taking care of all the creatures that I'm casting here with counter magic, direct damage, or swords to plowshares. Again, finding a creature perhaps? No, a Gem Day Tome, but now I've got one mana open to activate my foil, a Mishra's Factory. So I wonder what he's gonna do now. He's gonna attack, I'm gonna block and pump. And that's the end of the line, he was bluffing. And now he's playing a control magic on the factory. I think that's a bit of a mistake on the side of Gideon here, because the Mishra's factory will turn back into a land at the end of turn. And that means that Gideon is going to get it, um, is, uh, the, the control magic is going to fall off and I'm going to get it back. That's what I'm trying to say. And that's exactly what happens here. So uh, a little mistake here by Gideon. And he's recasting, he's playing another Savannah Alliance. And tapping four here, and there is a Rod of Ruin. Okay, that is kind of good, right? I can use the Rod to ping down the Lion. So it looks like, you know, I'm on 11, but I'm kind of stabilizing. And I'm just very lucky with that mistake. And now I'm pinging down the Lion, and there's a Serendip. So that's some pressure again. I need to find an Icy or another way to kind of stop the Serendip, perhaps a Control Magic. I don't think I play any, by the way. There's a millstone. That's it, passing turn. So I'm gonna take more damage. Gonna drop to eight. This is really risky. I'm gonna use the millstone again. It worked for me in game one, but I feel that this game is different. My life total is much lower. So the millstone plan probably is not working. I mean, I can swing in for two. And tapping six. Are we gonna see Mahamoti? Mahamoti Chen! So this is perfect. Now I've got a blocker for the Serendip. There is another Serendip. Now if I attack, he can block with double Serendip, so it's probably not a good option. Milling him there, losing two cards. And okay, finding a power plant. This is really good because now I've got the mana to start using all those artifacts, right? It can start pinging with the Rod of Ruin, another Rod of Ruin. I can start milling and I can get cards. Like this is ideal. Now my deck is working in full swing. I've got a blocker. I mean, I'm still on eight. The only thing I'm a little bit worried about are the side blasts in the deck of Gideon. You know, if he can find two side blasts, I'm dead. So pinging him for two life here. So he's gonna drop to 20. Okay, so at least he's back on his starting total. That's something. Also gonna use the millstone here. So just a lot of things that are happening on end step. And I'm not really, you know, he's also taking two damage from the Surrendip. So I don't really see a reason for me to attack with the Mahamoti because he'll just double block and he'll lose one of the Surrendips and I don't want him to. So he still needs to take two damage here from his own Surrendips, dropping to 18. Then I can use my Double Rod of Ruin and I can put him on 16. Yeah, now he's on 18, right? So I can use Double Rod of Ruin, put him on 16. So I can just deal four damage a turn, which is a lot. And it can also mill him and it can draw cards. So again, this is an ideal scenario for me. You can really see my deck starts to work when Tron is online. We're kind of discussing some ins and outs here. And for a moment there, I thought I was definitely gonna lose game one. You know, that Savannah line uh, turn one did so much uh, work for Gideon, giving him life and dealing damage to me. That was a super line, but now I've kind of stabilized. I mean, one control magic on my Ma Moti though, and, 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 and I'm in trouble, you know? It's as simple as that as well. So let's see what Gideon can do looking at his hand again. It looks like he's just gonna attack it with the two Surrenders. He just doesn't want to take any more damage anymore. The thing is, I cannot really take the damage as well. 
So I'm going to jump with the Phantom and then I'm going to use Rod of Ruin to kill the other Serendip. At least giving me a possibility to attack now with my Mahamoti. There we see a balance. Nice. Well done. So I'm going to draw a card looking for a counter spell. Not finding it though. This is a really good play from Gideon. And it's kind of keeping him in the race here. I mean that Mahamoti would have been the end of, uh, of his life. I also have got to put some lands in the bin. And just, just a lot of stuff happening in response to that balance. You know, I'm using my Rod of Ruins. I'm using my Millstone, drawing cards and all that stuff. So, let's see. Playing a Juggernaut. And attacking with the factory. So he's going to drop. He's actually now on 15. So it's going pretty good. There's another Serendip. So you can use that Serendip to block the Juggernaut. So that's a pretty good move. Also Savannah Lines there. I can of course ping the Lines. But at least that means I'm not pinging him. I think that's the idea behind it. I'm going to use the Millstone first. Then I'm going to use my Gem Daytoman on tap. So I'm not even using my Rod of Runes here on end step. And tapping five. Okay, there's an IC. I've got one mana open. What do I want to do with that one mana then? And is that... Okay, that's an Apprentice Wizard. So that makes sense because I had one mana left and then tap two blue. So that's the Apprentice Wizard. I'm going to attack here with the Juggernaut. So is he... Yeah, he's going to jump here. That makes sense. Although he could have kept it to... Could have jumped with lines, tried to attack with the three in the air, put me on five. That would have been a, a strategy as well. There's the disenchant. Not going to use it. Going to deal a damage. Interesting, because it could have used the icy to tap down a city of brass, dealing an extra point of damage. Anyway, killing the line here. What am I casting again? Another Juggernaut. Yeah, another Juggernaut attacking for two. So it's looking kind of bad here for Gideon. He's on 13. Am I going to win the World Championships New School 2022? That would be something. And again, using even my Apprentice Wizard now doing Apprentice Wizard stuff. Finding some more lands. And, I mean, Gideon's on 11 here. I just need to focus my Rod of Ruins on his life total and at the same time just attack it with everything I have. So using my Millstone and animating my factory, attacking for 7. If he doesn't have a blocker, he's going to drop to 4. That means 2 activations of Rod of Ruin and he's dead. This is so bad for Gideon. Only one card in hand. Is that a Swords? Okay, it is a Swords Plowshare, so taking the Juggernaut, that makes sense. I'm going to go up to 13. He's going to drop to 9. Soul Ring, yeah, that's not really going to help him. So I'm going to use my book to draw a card. I'm going to use my Rod of Runes to deal two more damage. He's going to go down to seven. I can attack him again for two. He's going to go down to five. So attacking him here. And there's the Mahamoti Jin. Wow. And he doesn't have a balance anymore. That's it. I'm winning here. The World Championships of New School. Ho ho! Ole, ole, ole. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The winning World Championship New School deck of 2022. And now we'll have to wait another full year to wait for another April 1st to um yeah to see who will you know to see who can beat this epic deck you know because it's just epic i mean rod of ruin it's such a good card you know <laughs> anyway i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope you're having a good april 1st out there and uh yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think of uh of this little joke here uh it's really been a lot of fun uh, to work on these decks i just want to give a shout out to my brother Yoop, who uh, got most of the cards for me from his lgs thank you for that and also to Gideon, of course, for just making this cool deck. And uh, to the people that collaborated here with the New School Project. So uh, my thanks goes out to you as well. Special thanks to Anna. I still remember what we did last year. That was great fun. There's probably a card popping up right now, by the way. And you can click on that info card to go back to, uh, to see last year's April Fools. That was, uh, that was a lot of fun when I got a letter 
uh, informing me about New School. So uh, if you've missed that one, take a moment to uh, to go back and enjoy that video. That was just so much fun to make. And um, yeah, I guess what else is there to, to, to ask you and tell you? Well, actually, I first want to thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. The channel, don't worry, where we'll be talking about old school magic and not about New School, don't worry. Um, and uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed the laugh, please leave a like, leave a comment. And uh, yeah, share it on your socials uh, if you want to. That would be great. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Happy to see that you found Timmy Talks. Please consider subscribing and hit that bell. And, and then there's one last thing that you can do, which I would really, really appreciate. And that is pay a visit to the Timmy Talks Patreon page because the patrons of Timmy Talks are really helping me keep the channel afloat. So if you can miss something, please consider becoming a patron of the channel. It already starts with $1. And the cool thing is you can then join the Timmy Talks uh, events, but you can also join the Timmy Talks Discord. And of course, I mean, you're helping a content creator uh, creating content for you that hopefully you enjoy and, uh, and love maybe, you know, could be. Anyway, um, this is everything I wanted to say. So I guess there's only one thing left and that is to go to the end scroll and take a look at all the wonderful, amazing supporters and patrons of Timmy Talks. Let's go to the end scroll. Ich bin der Sommerkasik.